Question 1. Which layer of the hierarchical network design model is responsible for aggregating traffic from the access layer and providing connectivity to the wider network? A. Core layer. B. Distribution layer. C. Access layer. D. Aggregation layer. The correct answer is B. Distribution layer. Explanation. The distribution layer in a hierarchical network design model is responsible for aggregating traffic from multiple access layer switches and providing connectivity to the core layer or to external networks. It performs functions such as VLAN routing, access control, and policy enforcement, and serves as the boundary between access and core layers. Question 2. What is the primary purpose of implementing VLANs in a network? A. To reduce network latency and improve performance. B. To increase the number of available IP addresses. C. To segment broadcast domains and improve network security and efficiency. D. To facilitate communication between different physical network segments. The correct answer is C. To segment broadcast domains and improve network security and efficiency. Explanation. VLANs, virtual LANs, are used to segment broadcast domains within a network by grouping devices into logical LANs regardless of their physical location. This segmentation enhances network security, as broadcast traffic is contained within VLAN boundaries, and improves network efficiency by reducing the scope of broadcast traffic and optimizing network bandwidth usage. Question 3. Which hierarchical network design principle emphasizes the separation of network functions into distinct layers for scalability and manageability? A. Modularity. B. Redundancy. C. Flexibility. D. Convergence. The correct answer is A. Modularity. Explanation. The modularity principle in hierarchical network design advocates separating network functions into distinct layers, such as core, distribution, and access layers, to achieve scalability, flexibility, and manageability. Question 4. What is a characteristic of an enterprise campus network design? A. It typically consists of a single flat network with no segmentation. B. It integrates wired and wireless access for seamless connectivity. C. It relies solely on layer 3 switching for inter-VLAN routing. D. It does not require redundancy for high availability. The correct answer is B. It integrates wired and wireless access for seamless connectivity. Explanation. An enterprise campus network design integrates wired and wireless access to provide seamless connectivity for users and devices across the campus environment. It typically includes access layer switches with support for both Ethernet and Wi-Fi connections, along with centralized management and security policies to ensure consistent user experience and network access control. Question 5. In the context of Spanning Tree Protocol, STP, and Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, RSTP, what is the primary purpose of STP, RSTP convergence mechanisms? A to prevent loops and broadcast storms in switched networks. B. To optimize the forwarding path and reduce convergence time. C. To prioritize certain types of traffic over others. D. To encrypt data transmitted between VLANs. The correct answer is B. To optimize the forwarding path and reduce convergence time. Explanation. Spanning Tree Protocol, STP, and Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, RSTP, are both designed to prevent network loops in switched environments by blocking redundant paths and ensuring a loop-free topology. However, one of the key differences between STP and RSTP lies in their convergence mechanisms. Question 6. Mr. Thompson is designing a VLAN trunking protocol, VTP, implementation for his organization's network infrastructure. What is a key advantage of using VTP in a switched network? A. Simplified VLAN management and configuration consistency. B. 
Enhanced security through VLAN segmentation and isolation. C. Increased bandwidth utilization and network efficiency. D. Seamless integration of wired and wireless LANs. The correct answer is A. Simplified VLAN management and configuration consistency. Explanation. VLAN trunking protocol, VTP, is a Cisco proprietary protocol used to manage and propagate VLAN configurations across a switched network infrastructure. One of the key advantages of using VTP is simplified VLAN management and configuration consistency across multiple switches within the same VTP domain. Question 7. What is the primary purpose of implementing Ether channel or link aggregation in a network infrastructure? A. To increase redundancy and fault tolerance by bundling multiple physical links into a single logical link. B. To segment network traffic into distinct broadcast domains. C. To prioritize certain types of traffic over others based on COS policies. D. To establish secure communication channels between VLANs. The correct answer is A. To increase redundancy and fault tolerance by bundling multiple physical links into a single logical link. Explanation. Ether channel, also known as link aggregation or port channel, is a networking technology used to increase redundancy and fault tolerance by bundling multiple physical links between switches or routers into a single logical link. Question 8. What is the primary function of inter-VLAN routing in a Layer 3 switch? A. To create isolated broadcast domains for different VLANs. B. To prioritize certain types of traffic over others based on COS policies. C. To encrypt data transmitted between VLANs for enhanced security. D. To enable communication between different VLANs within the same switch. The correct answer is D to enable communication between different VLANs within the same switch. Explanation. Inter-VLAN routing is a networking technique used to facilitate communication between different virtual LANs, VLANs, within the same layer 3 switch or router. The primary function of inter-VLAN routing is to enable devices in different VLANs to communicate with each other by routing traffic between VLAN interfaces. Question 9. When designing wireless LAN, WLAN, networks, what factors should be considered to ensure adequate coverage and signal strength for wireless clients? A. Placement of physical security appliances within the WLAN. B. Implementation of network access control, NAC, policies. C. Selection of appropriate antenna types and placement. D. Configuration of VLANs for wireless traffic segmentation. The correct answer is C. Selection of appropriate antenna types and placement. Explanation. When designing wireless LAN, WLAN, networks, selecting appropriate antenna types and placement is crucial to ensure adequate coverage, signal strength, and overall performance for wireless clients. Question 10. In designing high availability and redundancy for an enterprise network, what technology can be utilized to ensure seamless failover in case of link or device failure? A. Spanning tree protocol, STP. B. Static routing. C. Virtual port channel, VPC. D. Unidirectional link detection, UDLD. The correct answer is C. Virtual port channel, VPC. Explanation. High availability and redundancy are essential aspects of enterprise network design to minimize downtime and ensure continuous operation. Virtual Port Channel VPC, is a technology used to provide redundancy and load balancing by enabling links that are physically connected to different Cisco Nexus switches to appear as a single logical port channel. Question 11. What is a recommended best practice for enhancing campus network security? A. Implementing open guest Wi-Fi access. B. Enabling MAC address filtering on all switches. C. 
Deploying port security features to limit unauthorized access. D. Disabling encryption on wireless networks. The correct answer is C. Deploying port security features to limit unauthorized access. Explanation. Enhancing campus network security requires implementing robust measures to prevent unauthorized access and mitigate security threats. One recommended best practice is deploying port security features on switches to limit unauthorized access. Question 12. When designing quality of service, COS, for enterprise networks, what is a key consideration for prioritizing network traffic? A. Allowing equal bandwidth allocation for all traffic types. B. Prioritizing video streaming over voice traffic. C. Classifying and marking traffic based on application requirements. D. Implementing best effort delivery for all traffic. The correct answer is C. Classifying and marking traffic based on application requirements. Explanation. Quality of service, COS, design involves prioritizing network traffic to ensure that critical applications receive sufficient bandwidth and meet performance requirements. A key consideration is classifying and marking traffic based on application requirements. Question 13. What is a key consideration when integrating cloud services with enterprise networks? A. Restricting access to cloud resources to internal network users only. B. Ensuring compatibility and interoperability between on-premises and cloud environments. C. Deploying redundant network paths to optimize cloud connectivity. D. Relocating all enterprise data and applications to the cloud for centralized management. The correct answer is B. Ensuring compatibility and interoperability between on-premises and cloud environments. Explanation. Integrating cloud services with enterprise networks requires ensuring compatibility and interoperability between on-premises infrastructure and cloud environments. This involves considerations such as network connectivity, data migration, identity management, and security controls. Question 14. What is a fundamental aspect of network access control, NAC, solutions in enterprise environments? A. Restricting access based solely on IP addresses. B. Authenticating users only once during initial login. C. Dynamically assessing and enforcing security policies. D. Granting unrestricted access to all network resources. The correct answer is C. Dynamically assessing and enforcing security policies. Explanation. Network access control. NAC, solutions play a crucial role in securing enterprise networks by dynamically assessing and enforcing security policies based on the identity, device posture, and context of network users and devices. Question 15. What is a fundamental principle of software-defined networking, SDN? A. Centralized control and programmability of network devices. B. Static configuration and management of network infrastructure. C. Dependence on proprietary hardware for network functions. D. Limited scalability and flexibility in network operations. The correct answer is A. Centralized control and programmability of network devices. Explanation. Software-defined networking, SDN. Principles emphasize the centralization of network control and the abstraction of network intelligence from physical hardware to software-based controllers. This enables programmable, policy-driven management of network resources, dynamic configuration and provisioning of services, and automation of network operations. Question 16. What is the primary purpose of network segmentation and security zones in enterprise networks? A to increase network complexity and management overhead. B. To reduce the number of access control lists, ACLs, required for network security. C. To isolate and protect critical assets and sensitive data from unauthorized access. D. To optimize network performance and minimize latency. The correct answer is C. 
to isolate and protect critical assets and sensitive data from unauthorized access. Explanation Network segmentation and security zones involve dividing a network into distinct segments or zones based on security requirements and access policies. This practice helps isolate critical assets and sensitive data from less secure parts of the network, limiting the scope of potential security breaches and minimizing the impact of security incidents. Question 17. What is a key advantage of network virtualization overlays in enterprise networks? A. Increased network complexity and management overhead. B. Simplified provisioning and management of network services. C. Limited scalability and flexibility in network operations. D. Reduced network performance and throughput. The correct answer is B. Simplified provisioning and management of network services. Explanation. Network virtualization overlays provide a layer of abstraction that decouples network services from underlying physical infrastructure, enabling simplified provisioning, management, and orchestration of network services. Question 18. What is a challenge associated with designing enterprise networks to support IoT, Internet of Things, and BYOD, Bring Your Own Device, initiatives? A. Limited security risks due to standardized device configurations. B. Complexity in managing diverse device types and access requirements. C. Inability to scale network capacity to accommodate IoT and BYOD traffic. D. Lack of integration with cloud-based services for IoT and BYOD management. The correct answer is B. Complexity in managing diverse device types and access requirements. Explanation. Designing enterprise networks to support IoT and BYOD initiatives presents challenges related to managing diverse device types, operating systems, and access requirements. Question 19. What distinguishes Cisco Catalyst switching platforms from traditional network switches? A. Limited scalability and performance. B. Integration of advanced security features. C. Support for modular expansion and flexibility. D. Dependence on proprietary protocols. The correct answer is C. Support for modular expansion and flexibility. Explanation. Cisco Catalyst switching platforms offer advanced features and capabilities beyond traditional network switches, including support for modular expansion and flexibility. Unlike fixed configuration switches, catalyst switches provide modular chassis options that allow for the addition of various line cards, supervisor engines, and other modules to meet evolving network requirements. Question 20. What is a primary advantage of implementing SD-WAN, software-defined wide area network, solutions? A. Increased reliance on traditional MPLS, multi-protocol label switching, networks. B. Enhanced network security due to reduced flexibility. C. Improved application performance and user experience. D. Limited scalability and agility. The correct answer is C. Improved application performance and user experience. Explanation. SD-WAN solutions offer several advantages over traditional networking approaches, including improved application performance and user experience. By leveraging intelligent traffic routing, dynamic path selection, and application-aware policies, SD-WAN optimizes network performance and ensures that critical applications receive priority treatment over less latency-sensitive traffic. Question 21. When selecting a Cisco router platform for enterprise networks, what is a key consideration? A. Choosing a platform with limited scalability and performance. B. Prioritizing cost over features and capabilities. C. Evaluating the platform's support for advanced routing protocols and features. D. Ignoring compatibility with existing network infrastructure. The correct answer is C. Evaluating the platform's support for advanced routing protocols and features. Explanation. When selecting a Cisco router platform for enterprise networks, 
it is essential to evaluate the platform's support for advanced routing protocols and features. Different network environments may require specific routing protocols, such as OSPF, EIGRP, or BGP, as well as features like quality of service, COS, virtual private network, VPN, support, and IPv6 compatibility. Question 22. What role does network automation play in modern enterprise environments? A. It increases operational inefficiencies and manual errors. B. It limits scalability and agility by relying on manual configuration. C. It compromises security by exposing network configurations. D. It streamlines repetitive tasks and accelerates provisioning and troubleshooting. The correct answer is D. It streamlines repetitive tasks and accelerates provisioning and troubleshooting. Explanation Network automation plays a crucial role in modern enterprise environments by streamlining repetitive tasks and accelerating provisioning, configuration, and troubleshooting processes. By automating routine tasks such as device configuration, software updates, and network monitoring, organizations can improve operational efficiency, reduce human errors, and free up IT resources to focus on strategic initiatives. Question 23. What is the primary purpose of network monitoring and management tools in enterprise networks? A. To increase network complexity and reduce visibility. B. To minimize network performance and reliability. C. To proactively monitor, analyze, and troubleshoot network issues. D. To ignore network health and performance metrics. The correct answer is C. To proactively monitor, analyze, and troubleshoot network issues. Explanation Network monitoring and management tools are essential for proactively monitoring, analyzing, and troubleshooting network issues in enterprise environments. These tools provide visibility into network traffic, performance metrics, device health, and security events, allowing administrators to identify potential problems and performance bottlenecks before they impact users or business operations. Question 24. What strategies can be employed for network performance optimization in enterprise environments? A. Over-provisioning network resources to accommodate peak demand. B. Implementing quality of service COS, policies to prioritize critical traffic. C. Disregarding network congestion and latency issues. D. Using outdated hardware and software for network infrastructure. The correct answer is B. Implementing quality of service COS, policies to prioritize critical traffic. Explanation. Network performance optimization in enterprise environments involves implementing various strategies to ensure efficient use of network resources and prioritize critical traffic. One such strategy is the implementation of quality of service COS, policies. Question 25. In the context of WAN technologies, what is a characteristic of MPLS, multi-protocol label switching? A. It operates at layer 2 of the OSI model. B. It requires dedicated physical connections between sites. C. It uses labels to forward packets along predetermined paths. D. It supports dynamic routing protocols such as OSPF and EIGRP. The correct answer is C. It uses labels to forward packets along predetermined paths. Explanation MPLS, multi protocol label switching, is a high performance, protocol agnostic routing technique that operates at layer 3 of the OSI model. It uses labels to efficiently forward packets along predetermined paths known as label switched paths, LSPs. MPLS labels are assigned to packets at the ingress router and swapped at each MPLS enabled hop along the path. Question 26. Emily is a network engineer tasked with designing a site to site VPN for connecting branch offices to the headquarters of a company. Which VPN protocol would be most suitable for this scenario? A. IPSC, Internet Protocol Security. B. SSL, TLS, Secure Socket Layer transport layer security.
c pptp point to point tunneling protocol d l2tp layer 2 tunneling protocol the correct answer is a ipsic internet protocol security explanation in the given scenario of connecting branch offices to the headquarters of a company ipsic Internet Protocol Security would be the most suitable VPN protocol. IPSEC provides secure communication over the Internet by encrypting and authenticating IP packets exchanged between VPN peers. Question 27. When designing an IPv6 implementation strategy for an enterprise network, what is a key advantage of using Stateless Address Auto Configuration SLAAC? A. It requires manual configuration of IPv6 addresses on hosts. B. It provides centralized management of IPv6 address assignments. C. It enables hosts to automatically generate IPv6 addresses. D. It supports Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol version 6, DHCPv6, for address allocation. The correct answer is C. It enables hosts to automatically generate IPv6 addresses. Explanation. Stateless Address Auto Configuration, SLAAC, is a method used by IPv6 hosts to automatically generate and configure IPv6 addresses without the need for manual intervention or centralized address management. With SLAAC, hosts utilize prefixes received from routers in router advertisement, RAW, messages to create their own unique IPv6 addresses. Question 28. Which routing protocol is commonly used for intra-domain routing within an enterprise network and supports features such as VLSM, variable length subnet masking, and route summarization? A. OSPF. Open shortest path first. B. EIGRP. Enhanced interior gateway routing protocol. C. BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. D. RIP, Routing Information Protocol. The correct answer is A. OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. Explanation. OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, is a link state routing protocol commonly used for intra domain routing within enterprise networks. OSPF supports features such as variable length subnet masking, VLSM, root summarization, and classless addressing, making it well suited for hierarchical network designs and efficient IP address allocation. Question 29. What is a characteristic of a remote access VPN solution? A. It requires dedicated leased lines between sites. B. It provides secure connectivity for remote users to the corporate network. C. It operates at layer 2 of the OSI model. D. It is primarily used for interconnecting branch offices. The correct answer is B. It provides secure connectivity for remote users to the corporate network. Explanation. A remote access VPN solution enables authorized remote users, such as employees working from home or traveling professionals, to securely connect to the corporate network over the internet. Unlike site-to-site -site VPNs, which establish secure tunnels between network gateways, remote access VPNs utilize client software installed on end-user devices to create encrypted connections to the corporate network. Question 30. When designing a wireless LAN, WLAN, for a large office environment, what factor should be considered to mitigate co-channel interference and optimize wireless performance? A. Deployment of additional DHCP servers to allocate IP addresses to wireless clients. B. Implementation of MAC address filtering to restrict access to authorized devices. C. Selection of non-overlapping channels and proper channel allocation. D. Configuration of network segmentation using VLANs to isolate wireless traffic. The correct answer is C selection of non-overlapping channels and proper channel allocation. Explanation. In a large office environment with multiple wireless access points, APs, 
mitigating co-channel interference and optimizing wireless performance requires careful selection of non-overlapping channels and proper channel allocation for AP deployment.